So hi everyone, I'm Radoslav and yeah, uh, I just did one of my sessions about the previous problem, which was the rooted minimum spanning tree. And now we are gonna talk about the random knapsack problem, which I think was my favorite one in the round. So yeah, let's, I guess, go straight to the problem statement. It's actually one of the interesting problems where you have random things. So yeah, basically what we have is that there's n, which is fixed to 240. And we have like 240 random numbers that are generated uniformly, ran uniformly randomly from zero to model, where the model is like excluded. And like, let's, in the solution, I'm just gonna denote this number by m, but it's a prime number, which is like relatively large. But yeah, it's just a prime number. And uh, in the solution, you won't really use anything specific for it. You just use the fact that it's large. It's around like 10 to the nine and it's random. No, not random, it's, and it's a prime. And like, basically, I guess from the problem statement, which is random knapsack, you could have guessed that the problem asks you to actually given some random numbers that are very large, you want to find whether there is a subset of them that gives a certain sum. However, there's a small change that the sum actually is given model M. So in, in some sense, yeah, I'm gonna go to my notes now. Basically we have 240 random numbers, which are from zero to M. And then we have like a lot of queries, which are at most like 300,000. And every query is basically find a subset of the numbers, which are like 240, such that the sum of the subset model M is equal to QI, where QI is actually the value of the subset. And like, now if we go to like the problem statement again, you can notice that the output, although like there was no sample test, but like the output should be given in the compressed form because else you need to print too many numbers, which are relative, relatively large. So yeah, basically that's in a way one of, I mean, yeah, just like you, after that, you need to basically print the numbers in compressed form, the, the subset in compressed form, because like in a way, every number should be, will either be in the subset or not. So yeah, it's just like a binary number with 240 bits. So yeah, uh, let's get some intuition. So how many possible subsets there are, are there? Well, I mean, we have 240 numbers. So that's, I guess, quite obvious that we have basically two to the, two to the power 240 possible subsets. And also like M, which is the model, I'm just gonna denote it by M, it's around 10 to the nine. So yeah, basically we have like 10 to the nine possible queries. So this, like you can basically notice that M is way less than two to the power of 40, or like M is way less than the total number of possible subsets. And like the numbers that are given to us, like the 240 numbers are random. So this should definitely suggest that there always exists a, like for every number, like for every number from zero to M, there'll be at least one subset that has, that basically has some equal to it which is in a way like pretty good because it gives our gives us a lot of options about what we can do after that. But yeah, that's like one of the main observations that we are gonna use that basically the model is actually way less than the number of like all possible subsets. Although we are kind of gonna reduce the possible number of possible subsets in a bit. Okay, so actually, the problem had quite a lot of subtasks, no, not quite a lot of subtasks, but it had four subtasks. And the hard one was like 70 points. Then there were like three subtasks, which had like basically 10 points each. And yeah, I mean, first I'm gonna explain the basic solutions, which we tried killing. And yeah, I mean, the around 30 points ideas were the following. We'll split the 300 and 40 numbers into two sets. Let's say we just split them into 120 and 120. We could have done some other choice, but like 
that's decent enough. So yeah, we will just pre-compute some, basically like we, what we do is we pre-compute 10 to the sixth random subsets. As like, in some sense, we just generate two random long longs and as like 120 is less than 128. And then we just either get some number or don't get it. And like this way, we would basically just pre-compute 10 to the nine, 10 to the six possible subsets, and let's just keep them in some map. And like the key in the map is basically the sum, and the value is basically the subset. The subset in like the compressed form, where it's, I mean, basically like the first numbers in the compressed form. And then what we will do for every query is simply we again generate a random subset and check if QI, which is like the required sum, minus the sum that we just generated, like the new random thing. Model M is actually inside of the pre-computed map. Because if it is, we can just basically combine the two and we'll be fine. And yeah, this solution isn't good because we have actually quite a lot of queries. The best I could make it run was like around five seconds. And that's why we set the time limit to one second. And yeah, in general, I'm not sure where it probably it can be optimized more, but yeah, I think it's very hard to actually get under a second with this approach. And we mainly tried killing these approaches. And yeah, basically the better idea is to actually think about the specific numbers because they're, they're I guess, chosen. I wasn't a setter, I, I actually tested the round, but I think the numbers are chosen in such a way that it actually suggests the solution. So yeah, let's think about the numbers. So yeah, uh, I guess here you can see the red sixes, which are in a way important. So yeah, basically 240 is actually 40 multiplied by six. And now let's think about the model. The model is like around two to 10 to the nine, which is around two to the 40, because yeah, two to the power of 30 is around a billion. So yeah, two to the power of 30 is actually two to the power of five multiplied by six because 30 is equal to five by six. So yeah, if we actually move the five inside of the bracket, we will basically get 32 to the power of six. And like these sixes are actually pretty important because what this suggests is actually that we can consider a query in base 32. And if we just consider a query, we know that the, every, the numbers in the query are actually from zero to M with like close at M. And like that's less than two to the power of 30. So we can just consider everything in base 32. And this means that the number in base 32 will have at most six digits. I mean, if it has less than six digits, we can assume that it has like leading, leading zeros. But yeah, that's, that's pretty important because what we can actually do is that we can have six groups. I mean, like as we have six groups, each of which has like 40 numbers, we can in a way like map the numbers to the groups. So yeah, in other words, we can have a group for every digit. And like, because the groups this way will be independent, we can easily combine their answers. And this way we will actually get a very nice representation of the number because like we just get a query we get like we look at the subsets and we just like combine them because that's kind of trivial we just have like independent things so we can just combine them together and yeah the idea is that we just can easily convert every digit to the group but now comes like i guess the harder part which is like all right we want to somehow find the a subset for a specific digit. But that, that's actually easier. And I'm going to explain why. So yeah, like formally, what we want to do is for a group K, like we have six groups. So for every K from zero to, so from zero to five, because like we have six groups and including zero is six, uh, we find a subset with some a multiplied by 42 to the power of k. And like 
we find this for every a from zero to to forty one, and like what this actually represents is that if we have a digit a at position k in the number, we'll basically have a specific subset. And if you actually pre-compute those, we are basically going to be able to. I mean, we basically just have like this subset, and then every actual like each of the harder queries can be answered way easily by just considering i mean like they're just answering queries after that it's so way easier you just convert the number to base 42 that's just a loop and then you just extract the subsets we have computed in like the groups of size 40. and like yeah we have 32 queries in every group because we have like just I mean, for every group, we have all numbers from, I mean, we want to find basically at position for, for group K, we want to basically get some, which is A multiplied by 32 to the power of K. And like, this means that we basically have 32 values in every group. And in some sense, we have like 32 queries in every group. And yeah, in a way we want to find this fast, but here again, the choice of numbers is pretty helpful because I mean by this I mean like the choice of the numbers in the problem statement because like let's consider a group like 40 is actually pretty small and like we have 40 numbers in every group and yeah what we can do is actually do mit in the yeah, let me actually just zoom in a bit so yeah 40 is actually relatively small so we can actually do mit in the middle and yeah, we just split 40 into two groups, for example, like 20 and 20. And we just generate all possible subsets for the, I mean, for the first group, we'll just generate all of the possible, all possible subsets. And let's say we'll just add them to some hash map or just a normal map. And then we just go through all subsets in the second group. And we, I mean, we have 32 queries. So we just solve each of the 32 queries separately. And what we do is basically we just go through all subsets of the second part and we check whether the query which is like 42 multiplied 42 to the power of k multiplied by a like for every a that's our these are like the queries i mean and like we just go through these queries and we just check whether the value we want minus the current subset in the second half is present in the hash map for the first part. And yeah, that's pretty easy. And this complexity, the complexity then will be of the pre-compute will be six because we have six groups multiplied by 32, multiplied so by two to the power of 20, because like, yeah, we multiplied by the total number of, I mean, th that's basically for the subset. And yeah, th this should actually pass because it's pretty fast. Also like, because of the next argument, you'll see that it, Technically, you won't really go through all of the subsets for like the second part. But yeah, this should generally pass. But like this is only if we do the split by 20 to 20. And if we actually do the split 17 to 43, which I found was the best choice, uh, it will be way faster, mainly because the numbers are actually random and we solve each query independently. So yeah, for some certain query, what we will do, okay, we'll do the pre-compute, which in this case will be two to the power 17. And then we will just go through all of the 42 queries. We'll just iterate over all masks, masks from zero to two to the power of 23. And like, it will most likely be one of the like intermediate runs that will actually find the corresponding subset that will give us the value. So like, we actually will do way less operations. And yeah, in a way we want to minimize the pre-compute compared to like the part of actually finding the subsets for every query in this block. And yeah, I mean, overall, that's basically the solution. We do this pre-compute. And after we do this pre-compute, we just get, I mean, we now have like for every, not bit, but for every digit in base 42, we have like the, 
I mean, we basically have just the subset and we just get like this six subsets, which are independent. So we just merge them together and we just print the answer. And like, I guess one of the harder parts here is to actually see what's the probability of this succeeding. Because I mean, in a way we kind of limit ourselves to groups of size 40. And if you think about it, it's just a thousand billion. So a tr one trillion. And that's not that great because uh, I mean, there's quite a difference between two to the 40 and two to the 240. So yeah, like we can try actually finding what's the probability of this failing or succeeding. So yeah, uh, in a way, like the probability of the whole algorithm succeeding would be that we need to have like, so, all right, we have like a bunch of blocks, like the six parts we have, like for every digit. And like all of the, so we need all of the blocks to succeed. And like also for every block has to have the 42 digit values as subsets. So in, in some sense, like if one of the digits isn't found, then it's a failure. And like, we want to avoid that. But like, yeah, the main thing is that the numbers are actually random. So this means that if you actually get a random subset, it should, and like then model it by M, this will actually yield a random sum. I mean, also random number. So like, if we just get a random subset, this will also give us like a random number, uniform random from zero to M. Maybe not really random, but it will be approximately random. And like, I mean, when we actually try calculating the probability, we don't really care about, I mean, the probability of something failing, which is, I mean, if something, like this is the solution. So like, if it fails, the probability is most likely very low. So in some sense, we just want to approximate it and like show that it's very low and yeah, one way to like actually gain some intuition. And I think that this will be more important because if you actually try getting the theoretical analysis, you will probably get something kind of ugly and it's kind of hard, I guess. But like one very simple way to actually approximate it is to actually consider the number of, like let's just look at one block and like just consider the, I mean, you just consider the subsets and then the possible values. So yeah, there are like two to the 40 possible subsets. Assuming that all of them are independent, which isn't, it's obviously not the case because I mean, you can just have like, I mean, if you just have some two subsets where one of them contains the other, these two are obviously not independent. But yeah, like in general, let, let's just, I mean, like if we just have like two to the 40 subsets, we can kind of approximate them to be independent. Although like, I mean, that's just, a, nice way to actually think and like we'll see how low the probability will be and this will suggest that even if they even if they're in if they're not independent which is the case the probability will still be pretty low but like all right there are 2 to the 40 possible subsets and there are like 2 to the 40 possible values let's consider like the probability that a certain value doesn't exist which is I mean, like assuming that the values are independent and looking at one certain value, basically the probability of this value not existing is m minus one over m to the power to the 40. So in some sense, like this thing, which is side gives us the probability of the number not being, I mean, th this means that we have like basically m minus one choices because we can choose everything apart of from this fixed value. And yeah, what we, the overall number of values is M. So in other words, we have like for a single number, it's M minus one over M. And like, if we actually power this to two to the 40, it becomes very low as you can see. So, I mean, like this kind of suggests that even if the numbers, if like the subsets, as like for every subset, we have like a random value. Even if we use like some approximations and like in general, the, there is the fact that this thing isn't uh, like the things there aren't independent. The probability is still very low. Like even for a fact, like two to the 30 here 
it's actually also very large. It's like 10 to the minus minus four, I think. Like if you just power it to the power of 30. So yeah, I mean, maybe it's a bit low or a bit more, but like, again, it's less than 0.01%. So in general, like, even if you had like just 40 subsets, the probability will be, would have been very low if we consider the events independently. So yeah, I, I guess like this gives us like the intuition why the probabilities are pretty low. I mean, in general, like the problem has a very neat solution because when you think of it, everything comes to a place, like even the choice of the numbers. So I guess that's why I really enjoyed it. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. This was a very short session to be fair, but like, let's see whether there are some questions because I guess that's one of the, I mean, like if there are some questions I'm gonna check now. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it here. I'm just gonna look for questions, but like, in general, I feel like for this problem, it's better to just go straight to the solution. No, no, not straight to, the, straight to the solution, but like the solution is very neat. So the explanation is way shorter than normal. And yeah. Also, I mean, th there's, there are some other approaches with bit set, which in a way can be really killed because uh, I mean, in some sense, to kill them, you have to increase the maximum value. And yeah, that's kind of hard to do because, I mean, because then the probability will decrease and it's hard to also argue about that. But in general, I mean, probably it's a good thing to, like, if I have to think about a problem, maybe just while I'm waiting for some questions, one of the main things that's, you can take away from it is that uh, if you have some problem where like a constructive problem or like an ad hoc problem, maybe it's a good thing to actually consider the number in some base. So like here, the main trick that you actually use is that you can try, instead of like trying to do the whole thing at once, try like splitting the problem into some parts. And like by parts, I mean that you would have like a subset that will basically approximate, I mean, yeah, but basically like you just split it into, you just look at a base 42. And I mean like maybe in some future problem you can use a similar, similar trick where you actually have, have some constructive problem and you just, I guess like it's good to try thinking about the approach where you think about the bits. And not, not the bits, but like the, you think of, you basically try thinking about a, I mean, basically you try thinking about like converting the base. Okay, so there's a question about the initial part. What did you mean by the initial part? Did you mean like the, so yeah, I try to explain it quite fast. So yeah, you can clarify it. I'm gonna leave it here. But like, if I have to guess, so basically the initial part, I guess, is the part with the base 42. I mean, in some sense, like that's the important trick, which is the, we have a query, we try representing it in base 42. So yeah, in some sense, like we just have some number and we split it into, we look at it in base 42 and this, yields us a, like six different numbers, which are like the six digits. And we can just sum those digits because, uh, I mean like not really digits, it's like digit multiplied by the required power of 42. 
And like, if we just split it into like, like the digits by power, as the number is obviously the sum of those, then we can easily get the, I mean, like the, the, this way we just get some things that we know from the pre-compute. And like this way, the number of queries we actually want to solve is relatively low. And yeah, I, I think this should answer your question. Now, when I think back and I realized what you meant by the initial part. So yeah, there was also, okay, so yeah, it's the splitting part apparently. And yeah, in some sense, like, okay, I'm gonna answer like the next question. The next question is about like the approximation. Is there a better way to approximate it? I'm gonna talk about it in a bit, but like first again, to just clarify the splitting part, we just have like the, a number and we want to, we just like split into base 32. So yeah, in some sense, if you think about it in binary, we just get like the first five bits, then the second five bits, and so on, because like, yeah, two to, two to the power five is like the, it's like 42. And like, we would get like every possible number because like, like this five bits can be from uh, like from zero, 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 like four zeros to like four ones. Yeah, I'm not gonna write them because I'm using a mouse pad. And yeah, the uh, touch pad. Um, but like, yeah, in general, the idea is that we can split the number into such blocks and then we can just combine the answers. Hope this answers the question. So yeah, after that, uh, I guess the approximation. So, I mean, like in a way, if you think about it, that's kind of familiar, like the whole approximation is in a way familiar to hashes and like, as I mean, if I have to go like into a lot of details, I would have to explain quite a lot of things about hashes. So maybe like, I guess like some intuition is that you can think of like M as the model of some hash and two to the 40 as some, basically a string, which is, yeah, basically a string. And like, mm, yeah, so two to the 40 is actually two to the 20 squared because like we basically have like just two to the 20 squared strings and like a nice way to actually argue about the whole thing as some other intuition which i just thought of and it seems to make sense because like the thing about strings is that they're actually dependent i mean well, like substrings and like if you use m as a hash and you have a string that has length two to the 20, and you consider all of its substrings, which are around like two to the 20 squared, then like the probability of this failing is the probability of having a collision. And actually the probability of having a collision is pretty low for a million characters. You have like to specially construct it. But we know that the string is random. And if it's random, you having the probability of having a collision is actually very low. And I hope like, if you actually try looking into ways to actually ap approximate the probability of polynomial hashing failing, because like in a way it's similar to this problem as yeah, the two are kind of, the probabilities are probably kind of close. I guess uh, this can help you with gaining some orientation. But I mean like in general, in general when you have a problem with hashing and you have uh, to the, to the, to the to length equal to two to the 20, you're pretty fine with just using some polynomial hash. And if you want to get like some more theoretical analysis, I guess just try looking up how to do the theoretical analysis for hashing. They're like just a bunch of either tutorials about from some competitive programming people, but also there are a lot of papers. You can just choose one, I guess. Also, I mean like some online, classes may have it. I mean, some university might have posted their thing, but yeah, in general, that, the, these are like two ways to approximate it. And yeah.
Are there some other questions? So it seems that there are no other questions. So I guess, yeah, this session was shorter, but like, at least for the people that are watching it, I hope it will be, it was enough to understand the idea. And yeah, thanks for watching. And I guess like, oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, before that, the B-set approach. So the B-set approach, there, there are a couple of different ones. Let me try opening someone's solution because I mean, most people, it actually runs on the, basically like on the edge and you can you're not sure where you would get it past so yeah let me open up someone's approach so yeah this random knapsack okay so this solution seems to have like a relatively large time so i, I would assume it's with also like look at the memory it's uh it's like 500 megabytes so I, this suggests that it's a bit set approach, and indeed it's a bit set approach. But like most people just use some different tricks. But like I think I saw one approach where they had a bit set, then which is from zero to, to, to from zero to two to the power of thirty, and like basically they compressed a couple of consecutive numbers into. I mean, like in general, so. When you have a knapsack, you have to know that there is the solution which basically is uh, with a bit set, but like not knapsack, but like more or less the subset counting or like basically like you want to check whether there is a subset with uh, a certain sum. You can actually use, uh, I mean, for this you can actually use a bit set, and it's, I mean, if you just write like. Bit set, uh, not knapsack, but like oh, it's like zero one bit uh, knapsack, I think actually. Okay, so I mean, yeah, basically there are some tutorials, and yeah, you can check it out. But like the main idea is that people just tried optimizing this uh, approach with like. The bit set also like, but yeah, I mean like you can try finding it, but in general it's some optimizations of the whole thing. You can try like reading some people's solutions. So to be like completely fair, when I tried like uh, writing the solution, I couldn't pass in time of it. I mean, I was able to get like five seconds or six seconds, but I couldn't get a decently fast solution, and yeah. It's not the intended solution, but you can try like seeing how other people passed it. But yeah. I guess that was it. And I mean, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and yeah, I guess try absolving the problem if you weren't able to do it. and. As something again, as something you can take away from problem, there are some quite a lot of constructive problems where you actually use the fact that uh, if you just consider a number in a certain base, you can just you can just like split a problem in terms of like some certain base, and you like like just split it into parts and solve them independently. And yeah, in general, it's a cool trick. It's kind of abstract, but you can. In the future, maybe you'll find some problem where you can use it. But yeah, again, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. So yeah, let me stop sharing the screen.